Okay, class begins. Today, we will study chapter two, the physical layer. On chapter one, we have introduced the network architecture and protocols. Then we will come into the uh, principles of computer networks from the physical layer to the application layer. The physical layer is the basis of the network architecture. Here we will study these points. Uh, the theoretical basis for data communication, transmission media, and the digital modulation and the multiplexing the techniques. And then the public switch the telephone network, mobile telephone net system, cable television, etc. In this chapter, we will look at the lowest layer in the physical model, the physical layer. It defines the electrical timing and other interfaces by which bits are sent as signals over channels. Physical channel is the foundation on which the network is built. So the physical layer is the foundation of the network architecture on which the network is built. The properties of different kinds of physical channel determine the performance, including uh, in throughput, latency, and error rate. So it is a good place to start our journey into network land. So we will study the network from the physical layer, then up through the data link layer, network layer, transmission layer, and application layer. Information can be transmitted on wires by varying some physical property such as voltage or current. So information can be transmitted on wires by varying some physical property such as voltage or current by representing the value of this voltage or current as a single valued function of time, Ft, we can model 
the behavior of the signal and analyze it mathematically. Here, this is the uh, theoretical basis of the data communication. Uh, we will not uh, introduce this uh, theoretical uh, in detail. Then we will talk about uh, the bandwidth of the data communication. There is much confusion about bandwidth because it means different things to theoretical, to electrical engineers and to computer scientists. To electrical en engineers, analog bandwidth is a quantity measured in hertz. But to computer scientists, digital bandwidth is the maximum data rate of a channel, a quantity measured in bits per second. The data rate is the end result of using the analog bandwidth of a physical channel for digital transmission, and the two are related. As we discuss next, it will be clear from the context whether we mean analog bandwidth hertz or digital bandwidth bits per second. So the bandwidth is, means different things to electrical engineers and to computer scientists. We studied computer science. So, in my opinion, in our opinions, the bandwidth is the maximum data rate of a channel, measured in bits per second. So, because we are, we work or studied in computer science field. As early as 1924, an AT&T engineer next realized that even a perfect channel has a finite, finite transmission capacity. He derived an equation expressing the maximum data rate for a finite bandwidth lossless channel. Next proved that even arbitrary signal has been run through a no-pass filter of bandwidth B. The filtered signal can be completely reconstructed by making only two B, two times B exact samples per second, sampling the nine faster than two times B times per second is pointless, is pointless because the higher frequency components that such sampling could recover can already be filtered out if the signal consists of V discrete levels. Nyquist theorem states following. Maximum data rate the bandwidth of the digital bandwidth maximum data rate equals 2b equals 2b 2 times b times log 2v bits per second. For example, a noiseless 3 kilohertz channel cannot transmit binary signals at a rate exceeding 6,000 bit per second. Why? Because the here B equals 3 kilo, 3 kilo, 3 kilo. And the V 
this is a binary signal. So V equals two. So log two two equals one. So two times three thousand three kilohertz. This is three thousand hertz. So two times three thousand gets six thousand bit per second. This that is what the next theorem told us. The so next the theorem states maximum data rate equals two B times log two V bits per second. So from Nyquist theorem, we can get the bandwidth of a data communication channel if we know the analog bandwidth B and the discrete, discrete never of signals V, discrete digital level, discrete levels of signal v so if we if the b and the v are known to us then we can get maximum data rate of the digital communication data data communication of channel in 1948 claude shannon carried the next work further and extended it to the case of a channel subject to render noise. This paper is the most important paper in all of information theory. Shannon's major result is that the maximum data rate or capacity of a noisy channel whose bandwidth is B hertz and whose signal to noisy ratio is s as, as, as divided by n is given by maximum number of bits per second is the maximum data rate maximum number of bits per second equals uh, capital b the bandwidth but b times log two one plus the ratio of sig signal to noisy ratio s divided by n s is the the power of thick uh, signal and n is the power of noise so shannon Shannon told us the maximum number of bits bits per second equals b times log two one plus s divided by n. If we know b and the ratio s n, we can get the maximum bandwidth of the digital channel. So this tells us the best capacities. The best capacity means the limitation of the bandwidth of the channel. The limitation, the best capacity means the limitation of the channel bandwidth. So that's the best capacities that the real channels can have. For example, in ADSL means a thematic digital subscriber line which provides internet access over normal telephone lines uses a bandwidth of around one megahertz, the SNR signal to noisy ratio SNR depends strongly on the distance of the home from the telephone exchange 
and an SNR of around 40 dB decimal uh, there for short lines of one to two kilometer. It's very good. With these characteristics, the channel can never transmit much more than 30 mega BPS, no matter how many or how few signal levels are used, and no matter how often or how infrequently samples, samples are taken. In practical, ADSL is specified up to 12 mega BPS, though users often see newer rates. This data rate is actually very good with over 60, 60 years of communication techniques having greatly reduced the gap between the Shannon capacity and the capacity of real systems. This is the application of the Shannon theory. Now we will, we will talk about uh, the transmission media. There are two kinds of transmission medias. One is guided, the other is unguided. So the purpose of the physical layer is to transport bits from one machine to another. Various physical media can be used for the actual transmission. Each one has its own niche in terms of bandwidth, delay, cost, and easy of installation and maintenance. Media are roughly grouped into guided media, such as copper wire, fiber optics, etc., and unguided media, usually wireless media, usually wireless unguided media, such as terrestrial wireless satellite and lasers through the air. The so media gr roughly gr grouped into guided media and unguided media. So guided media includes copper wire, fiber optics. Uh, unguided media includes uh, uh, terrestrial wireless satellite, the laser. One of the most common ways, one of the most common ways to transport data from one computer to another is to write them, is to write them onto magnetic tape and the removable media. For example, recordable DVDs or soft disk or uh, USB stick. Physically transport the tape or disks to the destination machine and read them back in again. It is a very of it is a usually way of moving the information from one computer to another. Although this method is not as sophisticated as using a geosynchronous communication satellite. It is often more cost effective, especially for applications in which high bandwidth or cost per bit transported is the key factor. Also, the bandwidth characteristics of magnetic tape are excellent. The delay characteristics are poor. Transmission time is measured in minutes or hours, not many seconds. For example, uh, if you if you will borrow or copy some documents from your classmates, you can. 
if you are in the same building or in the same campus, then you can use the first way, the use the removable media to copy the documents. But if you, you and your classmates are at the phys different physical place, then the transmission time is merely minutes or hours, not many seconds. So the digit, so the delay characteristics are poor. That means that the traditional way is not the traditional way will be replaced by the modern ways, especially networking method. So we will use uh, twisted pairs and other media. A twisted pair consists of two insulated copper wires, typically about uh, uh, one millimeter thick. The wires are twisted together in the helical form, just like a DNA molecule. molecule. Twisting is uh, done because, twisting is done because two parallel wires constitute a fine antenna. When the wires are twisted, the waves from the different uh, twists channel out, ca ca cancel out, so the wire radiates less effectively. A signal is usually carried as the difference in voltage between the two wires in the pair. This provides better immunity to external noise because the noise tends to affect both wires the same, leaving the differential unchanged. This is the prop of the twisted pair. Four such uh, pairs are typically, are typically grouped in the plastic uh, shears to protect the wires and keep them together. This arrangement is shown in the figure three. It's a twisted pair, the four pairs, eight nines in the plastic shares into four groups, four pairs. It's category, it is the, the category five, category five UTP cable with the four twisted pairs. UTP means unshared, unshared twisted pair, UTP. Different LAN, different local area network standards may use the twisted pairs differently. For example, 100 megabps Ethernet uses two pairs. Uses the two pairs means out of the four pairs, uh, one pair for each direction, one pair for each direction. So sending use the one pair and the other pair use the for receive direction, receiving direction. So to reach higher speeds, uh, to reach higher speeds, higher data rate, one giga BPS Ethernet uses all four pairs in both directions simultaneously. This requires the receiver to factor out uh, the signal that is transmitted locally.
Then the second uh, wild media is uh, Cookshare Cable. It uh, Cookshare share Cable has better sharing and uh, greater bandwidth than unshared twisted pairs. So it can span longer distance at higher speeds. Two kinds of coaxial cable are widely used. There are two kinds of coaxial cable. One is 40 ohm cable, which is commonly used when it is intended for digital transmission from the start. The other one is 75 ohm cable. It's commonly used for analog transmission and cable television. So in the computer science, in the lo local area network, the 50 ohm cable is commonly used for digital transmission. But the second kind usually used for cable TV. Coaxial cable consists of a stiff copper wire as the core, surrounded by a insulating material. The insulator is encased by a cylindro, <coughs> cylindrical conductor, often as a closely woven braided mesh. Braided mesh. The outer conductor is covered in the protective plastic sheets. Here is a cutaway view of a coaxial cable in the figure figure four. The outer coat is a protective plastic covering. The core is the copper, a stiff copper wire, a stiff copper wire as the core. The third one, the third kind of wider media is power lines. Power lines deliver electrical power for two houses and electrical wiring. Electrical wiring within houses distributes the power to electrical outlets. The use of power lines for, dig for data communication is an older idea. Power lines have been used by electricity compa capacities for low rate communication, such as remote metering for many years as well in the home to control devices. In recent years, there has been renewed interest in high rate communication over these lines both inside the home as the local area network and outside the home for broadband internet access. Here is the figure five uh, shows a network that uses household electrical wiring. The convenience of using power lines for networking should be clear. Simply plug a TV Simply plug a TV and a receiver into the wall, which you must do anyway because they need power. And they can send and receive movies over the electrical wiring. This, so make using the electrical devices very convenient. This configuration is shown in the figure five. So there is no other plug or radio. 
For example, we plug a TV or receiver into the wall, into the outlet on the wall. Then the signals, the TV signals can transmit it through the power line. So power line can be used for data communication. It's very cool. Then the four kinds of the the fourth kind is fiber optics. Fiber optics are used for long haul transmission in network backbones, high speed local area networks, and high speed internet access, such as the FTTH, means the fiber to the home. An optical transmission system has three key components. The light source transmission media and the detector. Convention conventionally a pulse of light a pulse of light indicates a one bit a one bit and the absence of light indicates a zero bit. So Heavy night means one bit. Absence of night indicates a zero bit. So, so the the light can be used for data communication. The transmission media is an ultra thin fiber of a glass of glass. The detector generates an electrical pulse when night falls on it. By attack by attacking by attaching a light source to one end of an optical fiber and a detector to the other, we have a unidirectional data communication system that accepts an electrical signal, converts and transmits it by night pulses and then reconverts the output to an electrical signal at the re receiving end. That is the uh, principle of fiber optics. So the um, pulse of light is used to indicate a one bit or a zero bit. When a light ray, when a light ray pa passes from one media to another, for example, from a uh, fused silica to air to air, the ray is uh, refracted at the silica between air boundary, as shown in Figure Six A. For the kind of glass used in the fibers, the attenuation is shown in this figure. In the, in the units of decibel per near kilometer of fiber. Figure eight uh, shows a single fiber viewed from the up, from the side. At the center is the glass core through which the light propagates. In multi-mood fibers, the core is typically fifty uh, micro micro in diameter, about the thickness of a human hair human hair. In single mood fibers, the core is 8 to 10 microns.
is about uh, fiber cables. Figure 8b shows the end view of shears with uh, three fibers. With three fibers. This is the core of glasses, the core, the cladding, then the jacket. Figure A, 8A shows a side view of a single fiber, a single fiber. This is three fig fibers. The comparison of fiber optics and copper wire. Fiber has many advantages. To start with, it can handle much higher bandwidth than copper. Due to the low and attenuation, repeaters are needed only about every 50 kilometer on long lines versus about every five kilometers for copper. Fiber also has the advantage of not being affected by power surge. Electro ele electromagnetic interference or power failures nor is it affected by the corrosive uh, chemicals in the air import for harsh factory environments. And just now we have talked about the guided media or uh, wired media. Then uh, we will talk about wireless media or wireless transmission. Uh, for these mobile users, for mobile users, twisted pair, coaxial, and fiber optics are of no use because the mobile users will move around and around. So the wild line is not convenient and practical for them. So they need to get their hits of their data for their laptop, notebook, shirt pocket, palm top, or wrist watch computers without being tethered to the terrestrial communication infrastructure. For these users, wireless communication is the answer. So the wireless media, we, we can only use the wireless media for their mobile communication. So wireless communication is the answer for the mobile users. The wireless transmissions, there is a concept of electromagnetic spectrum in the vacuum. All electromagnetic waves travel at the same speed, no matter what their frequency. This speed usually called the speed of light. C is approximately three times 10 with the power of eight meter per second. In copper or fiber, this, the speed snows to about, uh, about to the two thirds of this value and become slightly frequency depend. The speed of light is the ultimate speed limit. No object or signal can ever move faster than it. We know from Shannon that the amount of information that a signal, such as the electromagnetic wave, can carry depends on the received power and is uh, proportional to its bandwidth. From Fig Ten, it shows now be obvious why networking people like fiber optics so much. Because fiber optics has the has 
larger capacity of data communication based on uh, uh, Shannon's theorem. From the electromagnetic spectrum, the the different bandwidths, the different bandwidths uh, are used for different fields, has different uses, such as uh, uh, maritime radio, AM radio, uh, uh, twisted pair for local area network, coaxial uh, FM radio. Uh, television, satellite, uh, terrestrial microwave communication, or fiber optics. Here is visible light. Or X ray, gamma ray, etc. So, different bandwidths has different uses for communication. Radio frequency. Radio frequency RF waves are use are easy to generate, are easy to generate, can travel long distances and can um, penetrate buildings easily. So they are widely used for communication, both indoors and outdoors. Radio waves also are omnidirectional, meaning that they travel in all directions from the source. So the transmitter and the receiver do not have to be carefully aligned physically because they traveled in all directions from the point of source. They travel in all directions. The properties of the radio waves are, frequent, are frequency dependent. At no frequencies, radio radio waves pass through obstacle well, but the power force falls off sharply with distance from the source, at least as fast as one divided by by inverse r squared in air, as the signal energy the signal energy is spread more thin thinning over a larger surface. This attenuation is called the path north. At uh, higher frequency, at higher frequencies, radio waves tend to travel in straight lines and bounce off obstacles. Path loss still reduces power, though, the received signal can depend strongly on reflections as well. In the VLF, LF, and MF bands, VLF, LF bands, the hair band, band bandwidths, band LF, MF, HF, VHF, VH, VHF and uh, V very high, high frequency, ultra high, UHF, SHF, EHF, even uh, high, e THF, bandwidth, different bandwidths, uh, different bandwidths, um, radio waves uh, follow the ground as in the street, in the Figure 12a, these waves can be detected for uh, perhaps the uh, 1000 kilometer, the low frequencies, less on the higher ones. Okay, let's have a rest for 10 minutes. Let's have a rest for 10 minutes. Please keep connection to the online class. We, uh, we will check. We we will check the attendance at the sixth at the second section. Okay, let's have a rest for ten minutes.
Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. <clears throat> Just now we have talked about the radio transmissions and the electromagnetic uh, electromagnetic uh, band band. Microwaves microwaves travel in the straight lines. So if the towers are too far apart, the Earth will get in the way, will get in the way, thus re repeaters are needed periodically. The higher the towers are, the farther apart they can be. The distance between the repeaters goes up very roughly with the square rate, the square root of the tower height. For 100 meter high towers, repeaters can be 80 kilometer apart. Most governments have set aside some frequency band called the ISM. ISM means industrial, scientific, medical bands for unlicensed usage. Garage door upon opponents, cordless phones, radio controlled toys, wireless mice, and numerous other wireless household devices use the ISM bands. To minimize interference between these uncoordinated devices, the FCC and mandates that all devices in the ISM bands limit their transmit power and use other techniques to spread their signals over a range of frequencies. Now the infrared transmission is an other, another kind of wireless transmission. Unguided infrared waves are widely used for short range communication. The remote controls, remote controls used for televisions, VCRs and uh, stereos or use infrared communication. They are relatively directional, cheap and easy to build, but have a major draw, draw, drawback. They do not pass through solid objects do not pass through solid objects. Infrared waves do not pass through solid walls as well. So uh, the unguided infrared, infrared waves only works in the, in the very small range. The control remote, the, the pair of, the pair of uh, devices should be very very near to each other. So they cannot pass through solid walls. Then night transmission is a cool way of data communications. Optical signal using lasers is inherently unidirectional. So each end needs its own laser and its own photodetectors. Uh, this scan offers very high bandwidth at very low cost and is relatively secure because it is difficult to uh, tap a narrow laser beam. It's uh, also relatively easy to install and unlike microwave transmission does not require an FCC license. FCC means uh, Federal Communication Commission. So light transmission does not require FCC license. This is uh, this figure 
Figure four, fourteen, and shows the convection currents that can interfere with the laser communication systems. A bidirectional system with two lasers is pictured here. Uh, this is a strengthen. Uh, this is Benson's a very narrow beam is also is a weakness here. Um, for example, uh, usually it does not work uh, on some uh, constitutions. Heat raising of the uh, building. Is raising of the building, then the the point where me where misses where misses detector, where misses detector. So there's an arrow. Usually, this point can point to this end, receiving end, but uh, with the heat of the sunlight, it doesn't work on some conditions. Then we will talk about communication satellites. Communication satellites have some interesting properties that make them attractive for many applications. In its simplest form, a communication satellite can be thought, as, thought of as a big microwave repeater in the sky. It contains several transponders uh, each of which listens to some portion of the spectrum, amplifies the incoming signal, and then rebroadcasts it at another frequency to avoid the interference with the incoming signal. This mode of operation is known as a band pipe. Digital processing can be added to separately manipulate or redirect data streams in the overall band or digital information can even be received by the satellite and the rebroadcast. Regenerating signals in this way improves the performance compared to a band pipe because the satellite does not amplify noise in the upward signal. The downward beams can be broad covering a substantial fraction of the Earth's surface, or narrow, covering an area only hundreds of kilometers in the diameter. The communication satellite is an interesting communication method. According to, according to Kepler's law, according to the Kepler's law, the uh, orbital period of a satellite varies as the ratios of the orb orbit to the three to the three th uh, three divided by two powers. The higher the satellite, the longer the period. The higher the sa satellite, the longer the period near the surface of the Earth. The period is about 30, 30 minutes. Con consequently, no orbit satellites pass out of view fairly quickly. So many of them are needed to provide continuous coverage and uh, ground antennas must attract them. At an altitude of about uh, uh, 35,800 kilometers, the period is exactly uh, uh, 24 hours. Uh, and at an altitude uh, of 30, uh, <coughs> 384,000 kilometers, the period is about one month. As anyone who has observed the moon regularly can testify. So the moon, the moon is the satellite of surrounded, surrounding around the, uh, the Earth, is the satellite of the Earth. 
uh, the second part of the uh, 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 the satellite period is important, but it is not the only issue in determining where to place it. Another issue is the presence of the fan belts. Layers of highly charged par particles trapped by the Earth's magnetic field. This figure shows the communication satellites and some of their properties including altitude above the Earth, around the trip, delay time, and number of satellites needed for global coverage. In this uh, range of the altitude uh, called LEO, uh, and this range of the altitude called MEO, median Earth orbit, uh, on, on this range of the altitude called the GEO. We have different latency of data communication. The coverage, the number of satellites needed for global coverage is specifically 3, 10, and 50. 1050. And three, three GO satellite, three GO satellite can cover the Earth, uh, can be used for global coverage, can cover the Earth, the surface of the Earth. Uh, three GO. Then geostationary satellites. Uh, geostationary satellites Earth orbit. A geo. For geo satellites, we can use the uh, RSCQ car band. They, they use the different uh, uh, frequency band. They have different problems. For example, air band uh, has the problem of low bandwidth uh, crowded, S uh, low bandwidth crowded, the C band uh, to terrestrial interference, uh, Q band has the problems of the rain, uh, ring feed, uh, key, uh, KA, K car band, uh, as the problem of rain and equipment cost. A recent development in the communication satellite world is the development of low cost micro stations, sometimes called VSATs, very small aperture terminals. These tiny terminals have one meter or smaller antennas and can put out about one watt of power called the VSAT, VSAT, very small aperture terminals. Uh, about a medium Earth orbit uh, satellite, uh, MEO satellite, at a much lower attitude between the two fan and belts. Fan and belts here, the Phantom bears, two phantom bears. One is newer phantom bears. The other is the upper phantom belt. So in the phantom belt altitude, the altitude, uh, the altitude, altitude in the two phantom belts, no satellite, no satellite works well. In 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 the two band in the two belts because of the interference.
the phantom bears, then there's of highly charged particles trapped by the Earth's magnetic field. So satellites cannot, doesn't work uh, in the two belts. Uh, as much a lower altitude between the two phantom belts, we find the MEO satellite. As viewed from the Earth, this drift seem slowly in longitude, longitude taking some time like six hours to circle the Earth. The constellation, the constellation of roughly 30 GPS uh, satellites or ob orbiting at about uh, 20,200 kilometers are examples of MEO satellites. So uh, GPS satellites, global point, global positioning systems satellites usually are MEO satellites. Usually we use the GPS system or Baidu uh, systems uh, are widely used for an electronic map. Low, low Earth orbit satellites uh, due to their rapid motion Due to their rapid motion, large numbers of them are needed for a complete system. On the other hand, because the satellites are so close to the Earth, the ground stations do not need much power. The round trip delay is only a few milliseconds. So uh, the LEO satellites has uh, much has has much uh, has many advantages uh, because of the round trip delay is very is, is is very low only a few milliseconds and the launch cost is uh, substantially cheaper too Uh, for example, iridium satellites are positioned uh, are positioned at an altitude of seven hundred and fifty kilometers in the in the circular polar orbit orbits. They are arranged in north south lakenesses with one satellite every thirty two degrees of latitude, as shown in Figure eighteen. This figure. The iridium satellites form six necklaces around the Earth. About 60, 66 satellites around the Earth. 66 uh, uh, LEO satellites. Uh, each satellite has a maximum of, a maximum of 48 cells. Each satellite has a maximum of 48 cells and a capacity of uh, 3,840 channels, some of which are used for paging and navigation, while others are used for data and voice. So, irradiant systems, also, uh, irradiant satellites is very, uh, is some advanced uh, global communications, although it is not uh, very uh, successful. Mm. Then we will talk about the digital modulation and uh, multiplexing. Uh, Mm. Okay, 
when talk about the low Earth orbit uh, orbiting satellites, so we can probably I can show some illustrations of the satellite systems. Uh, for example, uh, please wait for wait wait for a minute. Wait for a minute. Please wait for a minute. I will illustrate some uh, interesting things.
Okay, I will illustrate the iridium systems. Iridium systems. Okay. Here we, we, we have these systems, the iridium systems, and other famous systems. And, uh, She will put the print. So each satellite covers the some field of the Earth. Okay, this is we can say the covered these sixty six satellites cover the earth seamlessly. Okay. <clears throat> okay in the North Polar in the south polar here Okay, especially in the North Polar, you can see the North Polar. It's in the South Polar. Okay. <clears throat> then this is the we can show the okay. Global coverage. Global coverage here. Global coverage. This is a global coverage. Okay. So look. You can see other systems. You can see the other systems. Global star. And the other Clark Jill three seg three satellites can globally cover it in realize the global coverage. And uh, example three three satellites. Uh, 
can cover can cover the earth. Uh, for example, a global. Oh, sorry, global. Uh, view the coverage uh, cones. Okay. Um, the geo three geo satellites can can globally cover the globally cover the uh, Earth. Uh, except the two the two poles poles south and uh, north and south because uh, okay three three set three set nights three set nights can cover the earth but it cannot cover the north polar and the south polar South Polar, okay, right, okay. <clears throat> okay, uh, so much for today. Uh, that, that's all for today, and bye. Okay, class over, class is over, okay. Oh, oh, okay, we can. Uh, if you are interested, then we will show the ne uh, in the next time. We can show GPS, okay. What about the GPS systems? GPS systems is like this, like this. The GPS systems, this is a GPS, right? GPS, GPS systems is like this. Like this. This is the orbit of the GPS. The GPS systems. You can show the real, real mode. Real mode. Real time mode. This is a satellite, right? Satellite. And we can show others, other, the so teledesk. Okay. It's very cool. It's very cool.
think cover uh, is a global coverage. Okay, that's all. So, so, so much for today. Okay. Bye. <clears throat>